Well, how you doing, everybody? Today we are going to take a quick look at The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. This is a prequel to The Hunger Games and takes place about 64 years before we meet Katniss Everdeen. It was directed by Francis Lawrence and stars Tom Blythe as a young Coriolanus Snow before he becomes president of Pan Am. And yes, that is actually the character's name. Coriolanus. Sometimes I wonder if Suzanne Collins is a mad genius or just plain mad. It also stars Rachel Ziegler as Lucy Gray Baird, a tribute for the 10th Hunger Games from District 12. It has been a while since I've seen any of the Hunger Games movies. I remember liking the first one and really liking Catching Fire, and Mockingjay was fine but really did not need to be split into two parts. This time I did not read the book before seeing the movie. In fact, I had forgotten this movie was even getting made until I saw the trailer a few weeks ago. I'm not sure if it's the worst movie in the franchise. I'd have to go back and rewatch Mockingjay to make that comparison, but it was disappointing. At 157 minutes, it's not even close to the longest movie I've seen this year, but it felt like it. The movie is divided into three parts. Part one shows Snow and his fellow Academy students who are chosen to be mentors for the Hunger Games tributes. The reason for this is 10 years in, there just isn't enough interest in the Hunger Games and they may have to stop entirely unless they can give people a reason to tune in. And that's what the mentors are supposed to do, make people care about the tributes. And we see the beginning of Snow's relationship with Lucy Gray and he tries to help make her more appealing to the crowd while also trying to help her win. And then we have part two, which is where this thing really dragged ass. Pretty much the entirety of part two is just the Hunger Games itself, and compared to the other movies, this was boring as shit. And I understand that this is 64 years before Katniss goes into the arena, so of course it's going to look a bit primitive by comparison, but that's just all the more reason why it does not belong on the big screen. By the time we get to the 74th Hunger Games, the arena is massive. In the 10th, it looks about the size of a tennis stadium. There's just not enough interesting stuff going on, and all this being able to hide in such a small arena where there really shouldn't be that many hiding places feels like a way to just pad out what really should have been a 10-minute sequence at best. The bell rings to start the games, people rush for the weapons, stab, 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 done. Then we get to part three, which was better, but still had some issues. Snow gets voluntold into the Peacekeepers and is assigned to District 12. That's another thing that kind of dragged this down for me. Why do we keep going back to District 12? There's so much more of Pan Am we could have explored. There's 11 other freaking districts out there, and it just feels like they gave up. But anyway, this is where Snow and Lucy Gray's relationship really begins to blossom, and then we get something of a love triangle, because I guess it's the Hunger Games and you gotta have a love triangle, but really that just felt forced. And then Snow suddenly finds himself in the midst of an underground rebellion. That part was actually kind of interesting. But ultimately, everything goes to shit, which is kind of the problem with this story. We already know it's all gonna go to shit. Even if Snow at least appears to be a decent person at the start of the story, we know that can't last. We know exactly what he becomes already. There's no chance for a happy ending for anyone. There's no mystery to how the story is going to end. So really, the only way to save this is if the path to Snow's heel turn is interesting. And in my opinion, it really wasn't. They did do a pretty good job with the casting for this movie. Ziegler is very good as the toughest nails country girl Lucy Gray. And yes, they do have her do a fair amount of singing because why would you not? That includes some new songs and a new rendition of The Hanging Tree, which we heard in the previous movies. In fact, this time around, we actually see The Hanging Tree, which leads to some very creepy moments. Apparently, a bunch of Jabberjays like to hang around on the tree, and the victims tend to scream just before they are dropped. And the Jabberjays then mimic that scream, and it just echoes throughout the place, and ooh, that is unsettling. But anyway, Ziegler is great, needs to be in better movies. Blythe as a young Coriolanus Snow was fine in parts one and two, but I had a little bit of trouble buying his heel turn in part three. And the main problem is it didn't really feel like a gradual turn. It felt more like someone was just kind of flipping the switch on the back of the Krusty doll. It might have been more believable if the twist was Snow has been bipolar this whole time. Peter Dinklage plays the Dean of Snow's Academy, and he is as great as he always is. The man is just classy as hell. His character is not, however. And honestly, I thought he had a better arc than Snow. He starts out just as an asshole, but towards the end of the movie, he actually becomes sympathetic. And Viola Davis as Dr. Gall was just frightening. 
She is something of a mad scientist. She is the first game maker and also the creator of genetically modified animals that come into play in the Hunger Games. And God, that woman is going to give so many people nightmares. I would say this character is a sociopath, but somehow that just feels inadequate. Overall, I wouldn't say it's a bad movie, but it was disappointing. And at this point, maybe it's just better to let the franchise end. I could maybe recommend this for fans of the Hunger Games, but if you're not already a fan, don't bother. And that's all I have to say about The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Till next time, take care.